Welcome to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki. The latest news, important issues, and stories of Catholics living their faith in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. Here's co-host Jeff Jackson. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's program. How are you this morning, Archbishop? Good, Jeff, good. Here we are Friday after Thanksgiving, having had uh, way too much to eat, I can say for sure. Sure. Black Friday, but also, uh, more importantly, the Friday before the beginning of Uh, Advent. Advent, Right, and um, Advent's a a special time, a little differs than Lent. Um, In in Advent, there's a, a preparation for the coming of Christ into the world. There's more kind of a sense of, uh, of how you make ready basically the path, the John the Evangelist figure who kind of makes straight, you know, the, uh, the way of the Lord. Uh, there's a, a, a sense of the an- anticipation that's a, a part of, uh, of Advent. You know, when we do the preparation in terms of, of Lent, it's a time where we're into a penitential, uh, much more penitential right. We have an aspect of penance, but the penance is much more denial of self so we can appreciate um, what's happened. It's sort of like um, denying ourselves those extra foods so we can have that favorite dessert we want, you know, at, uh, exactly. at, at, at that time. So uh, I, I really, you know, in, encourage all of our uh, listeners to do whatever they can to to basically take this time to prepare, to make sure that they they're understanding, follow those readings on Sunday and drawing themselves in closer to uh, to the Lord. It's a great time of year to become more engaged with the church this particular season. And our our guest this morning is someone who is really focused entirely on getting Catholics to re-engage uh, with their faith. He's Matthew Kelly. He's author of many books, including Rediscover- Discovering Catholicism, Journeying Toward Our Spiritual North Star, and A Call to Joy, Living in the Presence of God. He's also founder of the Dynamic Catholic Institute. And a book on the, the, the Dynamic Catholic, which was, uh, has been very influential in many of the the, uh, the parishes, especially here around here in Milwaukee. And the Matthew Kelly name is well known in, in Milwaukee. Um, Matt has come out um, to, to several places here in, in Milwaukee and certainly has made an impact. And I would kind of frame... Um, um, uh, uh, Matthew Kelly is being one of the new apologists. Um, I always say apologeticists because I think it's a little bit uh, better. But a, an apologist is one who, in the early church, defended the church and defended the propositions of the church, defended the church uh, to the, the community and was not afraid, was basically out there. Uh, Ignatius of Antioch, um, uh, basically Origen, Chrysostom, they were all uh, apologists for, for the church, not saying, I'm sorry, but saying, hey, this is who we are, this is why we are, and this is why you should be. Um, and I, I, I put Matt Kelly in, in that line, as I do Peter Kreef, as I do um, uh, Patrick Madrid, uh, Father Bob Barron, who many people are familiar with. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the, the, the wonderful voice, uh, that wonderful Australian accent that comes from Matt Kelly pulls in so many people and challenges them to, uh, uh, to live a fully a Christian life. Welcome, welcome, Matt. Thank you. And Great to be with you. So, so proud of um, uh, of the work that you're doing. Uh, tell us a little bit about your faith journey, okay? Please. I grew up in uh, Sydney, Australia, and um, I was probably around 15 when uh, a friend of my family's, a uh, doctor, um, just really challenged me to explore my faith. He essentially said, you know, in the next decade, most of your friends will reject their Catholicism, and he said, to be honest, I don't mind if you reject it as long as you know what it is. I have a problem with you rejecting it if you don't know what it is. And he he really sort of challenged me to explore uh, my faith and gave me these little things he wanted me to do. I had to walk past church every day to get to school, and um, he encouraged me just to stop in the back of church and just sit there in church for 10 minutes each day and just sit with God and... um, you know, he he had an interesting approach. He said to me, listen, I don't care if you sit there and daydream or you sit there and plan your day or you sit there and talk to God. If you if you show up and you sit there for 10 minutes every day, sooner or later you're going to start talking to God and he's going to start talking to you. Um, and, and, of course, that's what happened. Uh, by some grace, I was able to create this routine in my life, this habit in my life, and it, it had a powerful impact on me. And a couple months later, he said, listen, you really, you've got to work out who Jesus is. 
he, he gave me a, just a, a little copy of the New Testament. He said, I just want you to read the Gospels and just really get a sense of who Jesus is. And about a month later, he said, you know, you, you, you need to get the confession. You need a, you need a good confession. And um, a few months after that, he said, okay, maybe let's start going to Mass once during the week. Really, I think that is probably where I uh, really fell in love with Catholicism. I think that's where I, I really started to see the genius of Catholicism in the intimacy of, of daily Mass. Um, and he just encouraged me to go once during the week. I used to go Tuesday evenings in my home parish in Sydney. And, um, and then, you know, he used to ask me, I remember one Thursday, we were playing basketball together one Thursday afternoon, and he said to me, uh, what are you doing on Saturday? And I said, uh, I said, I'm busy, you know. Um, he said, no, seriously, what are you doing Saturday afternoon? He said, just give me two hours on Saturday afternoon. I said, all right. You know, so he came by, picked me up to uh, 2 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, and we, we drove to the next suburb from where I lived, and we, we pulled up in front of this, um, this, this nursing home, you know, for old people. And uh, I thought it, maybe he knew someone there. He went in, and he, he had a box of chocolates with him, and he went up to the nurse station, and he said to the nurse on duty, he said, is there anybody here who doesn't get too many visitors? And, and she said to him, uh, just, walk down, just walk down the hallway and go into any room and you'll be in the right room, mm. you know? And uh, it was very sad. And we, he just went into the hallway and he went in the first room and he knocked on the door and he introduced himself to this old man and he introduced me. And he just started talking to him and he offered him a chocolate and he did this room after room. I mean, for two hours, we just went from room to room, just visiting with these old people. And at the end of each visit, he would ask these people, you know, I was 15 at the time. He said, what advice would you have for a 15 year old? You know, and it's amazing the things I heard from some of those people. And so in a very real way, I mean, this man, he was a lay person. He was a doctor by profession and he discipled me. You know, everything I'm doing today, everything I've done for the last 23 years in full-time ministry is the fruit of his work um, discipling me, you know, at the age of 15, 16, 17. That's, phen- that's, that's phenomenal. What, what then, you know, it, but to go from there, there was a lot of avenues you could have taken. Uh, what, what happened as your Catholicism became more and more um, uh, a, a, a part of you, what what is it that, that drove you to be, quotes, the dynamic Catholic that you are? Well, you know, I think that um, I talk a lot about sort of incremental growth in the four signs of a dynamic Catholic. You know, most of us don't have a St. Paul experience. Most of us do have some sort of conversion experience where we, go from not getting it to, okay, I get it now. But most of us don't have such a radical conversion like St. Paul. Most of us sort of have ongoing incremental conversion, and I think that was more or less my journey. Um, When I graduated high school, I went off to business school. Um, And I really felt that it was my call just to live a professional life and live, you know, a life of good values, good character, good morals in sure. the midst of the business world. Sure. Um, toward the end of my first year in business school, I was invited to give a speech at this event that used to take place in Sydney. They used to have the CEO of a business give a speech and a first year business student give a speech. In the same night, you had 20 minutes each to give your perspective on business, life, and faith. And I was invited to speak at this thing. and. I used to record these. This is back in the early 90s, so it's still audio cassettes, no CDs yet. One side was the CEO and the other side was the business student. And these tapes, they made their way around Sydney. And people started inviting me to speak at different events, both in the business world and in the church world. Um, And so I started speaking really quite by accident. It was never something I said, okay, I'm going to do that. Or even something I feel like, okay, God is calling me to do that. Sure. And the writing emerged out of that. The, the writing emerged by people hearing me speak and saying, well, you should write a book or you should write some of this stuff down. And so I began writing. And, you know, sometimes people will come to me and say, well, I want to do what you do. How do I do that? You know, and I really don't know. I don't know the answer to that question because I didn't really very intentionally set out to do this. 
And it has evolved every year, and it's evolved in ways every year that I never could have imagined. So I think it comes by being, okay, what does God want me to do today, or what does God want me to do this month or this year? Um, and I think if we try to do that, then if we look back after 20 years and say, wow, what a journey. You, you then founded, though, the uh, Dynamic Catholic Institute. Uh, so there, there must have been one point that, you, that you've said in your life that, hey, I, I'm going to put my stake in the ground here. I'm going to put my stake in the ground with, uh, with, with this uh, perspective. I think there are two important moments sort of in the life, well, many important moments, but I think two important moments in relation to what you're speaking about. One was in around the year 2000, where, you know, my spiritual director basically said, stop traveling all around the world and focus your efforts just in America. Uh, He felt that the travel all around the world, I traveled in 55 countries, he felt that the travel all around the world was, was having a detrimental effect on my health, and a detrimental effect on my real ability to reach people in an effective way. So that happened in 2000, and I really, the Holy Spirit was in him. Um, I think that was a massive shift of focus, and it was very powerful. The other moment was a couple of years later when, you know, I really decided to go beyond just being, okay, Matthew Kelly, the speaker and the author, and say, okay, let's create something that's bigger than that, and, and that, of course, is Dynamic Catholic Institute, because I wanted it to be not something that is only about me. I want it to be something bigger than me. Um, and I think creating Dynamic Catholic has given birth to a lot of collaboration with other authors, with other speakers, you know, with, you know, 120, 130 dioceses across the country, with bishops like yourself. You know, I mean, the collaboration between American bishops and Dynamic Catholic now is phenomenal. Um, and, and I think that that was a, that, that sort of also was a moment where I said, okay, stake in the ground, as you referred to it, and we're going to have a huge impact for the Catholic Church in America. That's not to say there's not lots of other needs in church around the world, but we just don't feel like that's our calling. We feel like our calling is to drive engagement amongst Catholics in America. Well, we certainly want to talk more about engaging Catholics when we come back. We're talking with acclaimed author, speaker, and Catholic apologist, Matthew Kelly. We'll be back in a moment with the continuation of our discussion with Matthew Kelly. You're listening to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Lostecki. We'll be right back. Are you a registered nurse or are you a certified nursing assistant? Would you enjoy working in a fully Catholic environment? St. Anne's Rest Home is hiring registered nurses and CNAs. The mission of St. Anne's Rest Home is to provide high quality care to the elderly. And that would be where you come in, as a registered nurse or nursing assistant. St. Anne's has provided faithful care of the elderly for over 68 years. Located on the near south side of Milwaukee, close to the expressway and surrounded by beautiful county parks. St. Anne's offers a loving atmosphere for residents and employees alike. If you're a registered nurse or certified nursing assistant, why not consider working in a Catholic atmosphere? Learn more by calling 414-383-2630. That's 414-383-2630. Or go to relevantradio.com and enter the keyword nursing. Relevantradio.com, keyword nursing. Welcome back to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Lostecki. We're joined this morning by acclaimed author, speaker, and Catholic apologist Matthew Kelly on this Friday before Advent. You know, um, um, Matt, in a particular way, there was uh, something that really fascinated me when you were talking about the impact of daily Mass on your um, uh, on your life. And I'll share you a little uh, um, a little story about that just recent that happened to me recently with a young girl coming up who was uh, who I was confirming. And she took the name Dorothy. And, of course, there's St. Dorothy, but she said how she was impacted about uh, on, by Dorothy Day, the, uh, the great person, um, obviously, in New York, who um, uh, outreached to the poor and uh, to, to the neglected. And I, I said to her, I said, did you know that Dorothy Day went to Mass every day? She was a daily Mass communicant. And the girl looked at me, her eyes got real big, and she says, I didn't know that. 
I said, that's what motivated Dorothy Day to feed others because she was being fed by Christ. What, what a great opportunity we have in, uh, in confirmation to, to, to share, you know, how great our faith is, how it impacts on us, and how so many uh, witness to us. And I know you have a, a wonderful confirmation program. Tell me, why did you choose confirmation? And tell us a little bit about the program. So there are roughly a million young Catholics being confirmed in the United States each year now. And, you know, when we started developing the confirmation program five years ago, you know, we did some research and discovered that 85% of them now stop practicing their faith within seven years of being confirmed. And just this idea that we're, we're hemorrhaging young people from the church. And I really felt that, like, confirmation is a moment where we should be able to win these young people forever, where we should be able to make a case for the genius of Catholicism and the role it should play in their life. And to make a case for Catholicism and do it in a way that's engaging and inspiring and incredibly relevant to their everyday lives. You know, I mean, the pro- the, actually, the program decision point, which is the confirmation program, you know, it starts out with a, with a series of videos that talk about how God wants you to be a great decision maker, you know, and he gives us the Holy Spirit to help us be a great decision maker. And... I think sometimes these young people see our faith as being irrelevant or as not being practical, but what could be more practical than, you know, learning how to make great decisions because they have such an enormous impact on our life and we're making them every day. And of course the Holy Spirit is the best guide of those decisions. Um, And so I wanted to really produce a world-class program and more than a program, a learning system. You know, there's online resources. There's an app for the smartphone. There's there's 72 short films. It's the first time video content's been available for confirmation. Um, There's incredible workbooks and leader guides and videos to teach the teachers, you know, how to approach the kids in different topics. I mean, it literally took us five years. We spent $3 million developing it. It's now available to every parish in America for free which I think is another game changer because when we first started developing it, we, we realized there was no point building the best confirmation program in the world if 50% of parishes were not able to afford it. And so we decided to go out and raise the money so that we could both build it and give it to every parish for free. And of course the response has been incredible. Um, and you know, we're just hopeful that we'll have an incredible impact on people's lives. And we hope that, you know, when bishops like yourself are going out there to confirm young people, we hope you have a different experience from with the kids uh, who have uh, experienced the Decision Point program. Well, I, and I, I think you're a, a, exactly right in in terms of emphasizing the decision that um, uh, a young person uh, has to make, and that decision based upon um, an understanding uh, of faith. I I go back to um, uh, maybe your own formation when uh, that wonderful mentor in your life said, hey, look, if you decide to to walk away from this faith, I want you to be able to walk away knowing what you're giving up. I, I oftentimes uh, take a look at the, the, the Jacob and Esau. You know, if you're giving up, um, giving up your faith, it's like, um, uh, like Esau giving up his birth heritage for a bowl of porridge. If you know what you're, you're engaged in, there's no way we we're convinced of it. There's no way anyone would give this up. No way anyone would give it up. You know, in, in, in a special way, I, I know there's a high energy about you, um, uh, uh, Matt, and I know that that high energy has to come from a, a, a deep aspect of, of your faith. But it also has to come from, you know, a, a, a sense of support from a, from a home. So tell me a little bit about your family, about Maggie, about the children. You know, it's interesting. I, I grew up in a Catholic family. I went to Catholic schools. And uh, my, my parents were faithful Catholics, but they, they didn't understand the faith. And they, they, they didn't really understand how to pass it on to us in a deeply personal way. Um, I've noticed, you know, growing with my kids and just talking to them about Jesus every day, you know, and I, I sit with them before they go to bed at night and we, we do our prayers and I, I, I say to them, just talk to Jesus about your day. And they just have these fascinating little conversations with, with Jesus. And it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's transformed my spirituality because the simplicity of their spirituality, you know, puts my adult spirituality to shame, I think. Um, 
I had a beautiful experience uh, around uh, Advent last year. It was a couple weeks before Christmas, and my eldest boy, Walter, um, he, was, he was three years old at the time. He came running into my office at home, and I can, it got hard floors, and so I could hear his little feet coming along, and he came into my office. He said, Daddy, I have a question for you. I said, okay, well, sit down, and so he sat down on the chair at my desk. I said, what's your question? He said, Christmas is Jesus' birthday, yes? I said, that's right. Very good, Walter. So he said, thank you, Daddy, and then he left, and I heard him running down the hallway away from my office, and then I heard him stop and slowly start to come back to my office. He said, Daddy, I've got another question. I said, okay. He said, if, if Christmas is Jesus' birthday, why do I get presents? I thought to myself, wow, what a great question for a three-year-old, you know? And I think just to be talking to these kids about faith, just to be talking to them about Jesus, just to be talking to them about God, it's amazing what they sponge up, especially when they're little, especially when they're little. And I think very often parents come to me when their kid's 15 and off the rails. And the truth is, we've missed our moment of opportunity. And our moment of opportunity is in those early years to really win them in a powerful way. That's why our primary schools have had such a powerful impact on so many young Catholic lives. Um, and so I just think there's just, there's nothing like talking to kids about faith. And it's just a very powerful experience for us and for them. Matt, with such a demand on, um, um, on you to, to do all the, the speaking and traveling or, around. How do you m- maintain that s- strong marital life with uh, Maggie? How, uh, wh- what do you do to, uh, uh, to put an emphasis on that in, uh, in your own personal life? Yeah, it's interesting. I, I'm not traveling anywhere near as much as I used to. I used to travel when I first got married, which is uh, five, six years ago. I was traveling 250 days a year, which is wow. Wow. completely unsustainable in marriage and family. Uh, this year, I'll probably only travel 60, uh, maybe 70 days. So I don't travel anywhere near as much as I used to. Um, family, I, I just don't think you can travel like that and, and honor the primary vocation of marriage. But as a result, you know, um, I've been able to do things like develop the confirmation program. I never would have been able to develop that if I was on the road. Um, now we're working on a first communion program, a first reconciliation program, which we're going to release next year. We're working on a marriage prep program, which we're going to release the year after. And so I'm not me- reaching as many people in a live experience as I did, say, five or ten years ago. But I'm reaching millions more people through these programs um, that also allow me to be at home and, and be a husband and be a father. I, I know you're a tremendously um, uh, uh, positive uh, person. I, I that's one of the the great attractions um, in your presentation that um, that you you you've got this this wonderful sense of, um, of being filled with the the spirit and how how wonderful that um, Catholicism is. But let me ask ask you um, uh, two questions. They're um, basically they're part of the same. Uh, what gives Matt Kelly um, worry about uh, the, the the state of Catholicism in the United States? And then what gives Matt Kelly hope about the state of Catholicism in the United States? So a few things. Firstly, yes. Do I get down sometimes uh, about the state of Catholicism? Yes, always. From time to time, that's going to happen to anybody. I always try and make that a personal reflection or inward reflection rather than an outward reflection. You know, and I have my own struggles, I have my own brokenness, and so whatever struggles or brokenness I see in the church are usually a reflection of some sort of struggle or brokenness that I have within me, if I'm honest and humble. And so I don't think it makes sense to make that an outward reflection. It should, any, any of that should help us grow spiritually. Uh, what concerns me in the church? I guess one thing that concerns me in the church is that I hear a lot more talk about church and a lot less talk about God, and I think that's dangerous um, because, yes, the church is important. The institution of the church is, is part of the genius, but I think we should always be talking more about God than we do about church, um, and I, I sometimes see this trend. It, it's, it ebbs and flows, um, but I think we're, we're in a p- place at the moment where we're talking a lot about church and maybe not enough about God. Um, 
What gives me hope? I think goodness will always prevail in the long run, even if in the long run ends up being the afterlife. Um, I, I think goodness will always prevail in the long run. I think that whenever I'm disappointed in the church, whenever I'm disappointed in something that happens in my own parish, or whenever I'm disappointed in the way I've handled something, I always see that as a call to go back to the Gospels, you know, and to, to, to re-engage with Jesus and, uh, and to really hear his radical invitation again. And it is a radical invitation. I mean, it, when you really read the Gospel and you think about some of the things that he invites us to, loving our enemies and praying our enemies, praying for our enemies, you know, to name just one of a thousand radical invitations that are in the Gospel, so I think that's probably my answer there. What gives me hope? People want to be involved. Like I look at Dynamic Catholic and how many people want to be involved at Dynamic Catholic. You know, when we announce a job, we get hundreds of applications for every job we announce. You know, we've got now 20,000 ambassadors. These are people who actively engage in their local parish, actively engage in Dynamic Catholic all across the country. You know, and I just look at the thousands of parishes that do our book program every year the thousands of parishes that are using Decision Point, the new confirmation program, I think people are hungry, and, and that gives me hope. And I think as society becomes more anti-Christian, anti-Catholic, that is sort of wakening people up. You know, people are sort of asleep there, and now they're starting to wake up and think, wow, we've got to stand up, or we're, going to get, we're just going to get trampled on. Matthew, thank you so much for joining us to talk about uh your work and your faith journey. This has been a fascinating discussion. For our listeners who would like to learn more about Matthew Kelly, his books, his work, Dynamic Catholic, etc., a couple of websites for you, matthewkelly.com, matthewkelly.com, or dynamiccatholic.com. When we come back, we'll close our conversation um, with Matthew Kelly. Stay with us. Are you a registered nurse or are you a certified nursing assistant? Would you enjoy working in a fully Catholic environment? St. Anne's Rest Home is hiring registered nurses and CNAs. The mission of St. Anne's Rest Home is to provide high quality care to the elderly. And that would be where you come in, as a registered nurse or nursing assistant. St. Anne's has provided faithful care of the elderly for over 68 years. Located on the near south side of Milwaukee, close to the expressway and surrounded by beautiful county parks. St. Anne's offers a loving atmosphere for residents and employees alike. If you're a registered nurse or certified nursing assistant, why not consider working in a Catholic atmosphere? Learn more by calling 414-383-2630. That's 414-383-2630. Or go to relevantradio.com and enter the keyword nursing. Relevantradio.com, keyword nursing. Welcome back to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Lestecki. We've been talking to Matthew Kelly, author, speaker, Catholic, apologist. Thanks again so much for joining us. Uh, Archbishop Lestecki, if you would please close, um, as we always do, with a prayer. And let us pray for, um, in a very special way, for all those who um, um, are out there defending um, and promoting the church. Um, uh, for, for Matt Kelly, for all the um, uh, apologists to, who are in our culture now, always reminding us of the great gift that we have. And together, let us pray the way our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy, name. thy name. Thy kingdom thy come. Kingdom come. Thy, thy will be done on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day, day our, our daily bread, bread and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Matt, thank you very much. God bless you. And thank my, you. You're very welcome. And blessings upon your family. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Archbishop. And thanks to all our listeners for joining us this morning. We'll be back next week with another edition of Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Lestecki. Please join us then. In the meantime, I'm Jeff Jackson wishing you a happy weekend. See you at Matt. This has been Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki and co-host Jeff Jackson. Join us again next week for the latest news, important issues, and stories of Catholics living their faith in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee.